Good evening, everyone. I'm happy to see you. I uh, thank you for joining me on my channel as I talk about things that interest me. Tonight, we are discussing Christmas music, and you're going to say, oh, it's January. I don't care. Um, I'm actually putting away the Christmas music, and I'm big on Christmas music. I love it. I start playing it sometime in November and play it all the way through uh, the holiday season. And so I'll just show you a few of the items in my collection. It's not a big one, but it's, uh, it's enough. Anything that I don't play on physical records, CDs, or cassettes, I play on Spotify through my TV for the whole house. Um, so I'll start with stuff that I don't really listen to. Uh, I have a hobby. If you collect music at all in any format, I'm sure you're familiar with Discogs. Discogs.com. Uh, a Discog is, is short for a discography, which is a collection or a cataloging of. Uh, it's a it's a cataloging of all the physical releases put out by a certain artist or whatever. And so I like Discogs so much. I like to catalog things there just for fun. So when I go to the thrift stores, if I have some extra cash, I actually buy ticky tacky stuff like this and get it into the database. And it helps, it helps the world study music and uh, study where, you know, the music industry has taken us. And uh, there are people who are historians, music historians, and they need that data. Up to this point, I've submitted almost 4,000 unique releases to Discogs.com. Releases that the world would not have known existed had I not put them on there. And uh, over 28,000 images that I scan on a flatbed scanner and upload to Discogs. So just basically really simple stuff. Now, I didn't actually spend a dollar on each of these. Our local thrift store wanted to clear out their Christmas stock, so they gave all this to me for free. So I go on Discogs and I just put all this stuff in and, uh, and get, it, get it listed. And that's literally my hobby. And then I'll re-donate it or whatever when I'm done. Or if I happen to like something, I'll keep it. Um, all right. So while the holiday season was approaching, I found this absolute gem at the thrift store. I'm sure everybody knows the uh, Amy Grant Christmas album. Um, Tennessee Christmas is possibly one of the best Christmas songs ever. Really great. And her Emmanuel version is really nice. But this whole album is, is just fantastic. Just fantastic. And it, it was in excellent condition. I'm sure you can see just by looking at it. It's, it's in really great shape. So uh, I was happy to find that and add that to my collection. Of course, what Christmas collection is complete if it doesn't have the Peanuts Christmas, the Charlie Brown Christmas, right? This one's kind of cool. It's a uh, lenticular cover. I don't know if you can see that on the uh, camera, but this one's really great. This one is, uh, let me pull out the vinyl and show you here, because I'm also a sucker for... Uh, colored vinyl. Oh, there's the, the cover. It's uh, it's like, they call it lenticular. Anyways. Here we go. Now this one is uh, green and red split. Now you'll notice if you, if I hold it up to the camera here, okay, there's some light coming through it. A lot of people errantly call that transparent. It is not. It is translucent. It is not transparent, which would be totally see-through. It is translucent, which means it allows some light to pass through. Light being the lucent part. Trans meaning going through or passing through. So translucent, allowing light through. And that's what that is. I gotta carefully put this back in. Oh, and I use these uh, record sleeves. Uh, they are resealable, and I've been using them for a, a decade now, and they still seal after all these uses. They keep dust and other debris 
and even moisture off of your records. So uh, if you want your records smelling fresh, use, um, I call them blank sleeves. That's what they originally called. I get them from um, clearbags.com. They're called blank sleeves. And here's a Stan Kenton jazz record from 1950 or 60 something. I think it's from the early 60s. Anyways, this is a nice uh, Stan Kenton uh, jazz record that I, that I enjoy. All right, let me set that aside. <clears throat> Here's something else I listen to, a very unique part of my collection. Now, this is not Christmas. I listen to this kind of stuff at various times throughout the year, but I like trains. And these records are literally train sounds. And that's all they do, steam trains and so on, locomotives. And you just hear them moving down the tracks. You hear all the whistles, the rumbling, everything. So I love to pull out my train records. Sometimes for a like a Sunday afternoon, I'll just pull out my train records and I'll sit and I'll have a drink and I'll just listen. I'll just listen to my train records couple more here. Steam's greatest hits. And lastly, one last item I wanted to show you. Well, maybe not last, but one nearly last item I wanted to show you. That is a prize in my collection is this. Deep Voices. This is whale songs on record. And for the same reason that I listen to trains, sometimes I just love to listen to the whales talk. All right, here's a little gem that I want to show you. This I found locally, and I would encourage you to do the same. If you're into collecting stuff, do the same. So this is a translucent golden yellow record. This is actually a promo, promotion copy. Uh, I think the video is backwards. But this is the five Impris. On one side is Little Miss Sad. And on the other side is Nobody Cares. So this was a garage rock band from Benton Harbor, Michigan, which is here in southwest Michigan. And they were back in the 60s. And um, I found this at a local thrift store. Somebody had gotten rid of it. And I was like, I need that in my collection. Not because I'm a huge fan of 1960s garage rock, which is not terrible, but um, it's historical. And it's actually in pretty good condition, as you can see. Pretty good condition. Um, I encourage you to do this as a collector. Collect stuff from your area. It's always a good thing to do. Um, just so you get to know the history of music in your area. And uh, so that's something fun. I always look for Michigan releases to put on Discogs as well. A lot of them are local artists who never get national distribution. And the database needs more information on artists like that. Alrighty. Well, I think that is it for tonight. It's going to be a shorter video. I hope you all are well. Feel free to comment. I've had a couple comments so far. I thank you for that. And I intend on making even more videos. Have a great night.